I would like on behalf of all of you to thank the uh, debaters and our adjudicator. You can see that uh, all, all three of them, you, I'm sure you will realise, are extremely busy people. They've taken their time out to be here and not only have they taken their time out, they've obviously uh, done a great deal of uh, research and effort in their preparation and I would like you to please thank them in the usual way. Uh, I'd now like to call uh, Christina Colby, is it? Sorry, I'm not sure I can... Colvick? Colvick, I beg your pardon, to come to the stage to make the presentations. Uh, no doubt there are people here who know why, and I'm sure you deserve it, uh, and well done. <laughs> wasn't told about. The other one I have been told about, um, and it gives me great pleasure to, uh, at this stage, call uh, Rose Levine uh, forward. Rose has a, uh, been a wonderful contributor over many, many years to many, many Jewish organisations. She's uh, always unassuming in the background, doing all the hard work, and uh, I uh, am uh, particularly delighted to be able to make a presentation uh, to Rose today of the... Uh, Mishloch Manoff. Uh, unfortunately, as some of you may have been aware, you saw, uh, uh, I think uh, Parliament is actually sitting and uh, both Helen and uh, Helen Shardy and Marsha Thompson had to quietly slip out so we can't uh, uh, make a presentation to them, but we're extremely grateful for them coming and uh, being part of today's proceedings. Uh, am I to continue with uh, any more presentations, or am I now concluded? Uh, now, finally, um, uh, can I call on uh, Rabbi Sholem Blazowski? You have a few more questions. Uh, to each of our debaters and our adjudicator, a small present, uh, Purim presentation uh, on behalf of Chabad uh, CBD to thank them for their participation in today's proceedings. <laughs> to, to forget our host, to the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Susan Ryan, Thank you again for being our host today. Now do I introduce the rabbi? No? No? I'd like, on behalf of a part of Melbourne CBD, I would like to thank you all for being here, and I would like to thank our debating team who did an outstanding job and were so gracious in accepting that it made the event, the organization of the event, very easy. Thank you all. I'd like to present this gift to uh, uh, Mishlach Monat, to uh, Mr. Tom Danos, who was so pleasant and so easy to work with that it was really a fantastic experience. Thank you. And I believe my final responsibility uh, this afternoon is to introduce Rabbi Sholem uh, Bezovsky, who will read the Megillah. I'm told it's at the rear of your magazine for those who wish to follow. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to make an impromptu presentation, if you don't bear with me for one moment. Spent so many hours in pre preparation for today's event. Can I ask Mr. Sotok to come forward?
You may ask why I am dressed this way. In fact, I am an English gentleman, and I have requested of the Queen that I be appointed the new Governor General. <laughs> All in favour say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have another impromptu uh, part to this uh, celebration today, and that is I, as a rabbi, cannot hold back from adding a few words before the Megillah reading. So I will do that, and I ask you to bear with me. Um, Mr. Dallas made mention of the uh, debate between the Pope and the Jew Moshe. I'm reminded of yet another debate between the Pope and the Jew Moshe. Kind of how to a lot of debates. And um, again, the Jews were in deep trouble. The Pope, being a learned man, challenged them, and there was no one who was willing to stand and to that the Pope. And so Moshe, a simple man, says, I will. And everyone gathered to witness the spectacle. And uh, Moshe, being the simple one, was given the liberty of beginning because the Pope felt it would be fair. And so Moshe said, I ask you, the Pope, to translate for me just two Hebrew words. And they are, Aini Yodea. And of course the Pope responded, I do not know. And of course the Jews were saying. Later, when the Jews asked Moshe, how did he come up with such a brilliant plan? And Moshe responded, I was studying with my teacher many years ago, and we came across these two words, and the rabbi responded, I do not know. If my rabbi doesn't know, surely the Pope does. <laughs> I'd just like to tell a short story, and then we can begin reading the Megillah. Uh, apparently, I was given 20 minutes to read the Megillah. Some of you who might have been, well, I see one gentleman who was at the Gamble Beeson meeting. That was a bit longer than 20 minutes. But um, we'll try and get in within the 20 minute schedule. Um, the Crown Prince was very ill. And uh, the King made a decree that there shall be, shall be no merriment, there shall be no loud noise making of any sort until the Crown Prince recovers. Alas, the Jews were celebrating Purim, and a very important part of Purim is the noise-making in all sorts of forms. And that obviously included the banging for Haman's name. Doubtless, the parents were quite happy that their children would not be able to bang the graggers. But nevertheless, a heavy power descended upon the Jewish community. Did I pronounce that correctly? I hope so, that's good. Well, one of, the, one of the debaters asked that, so I thought I could do that as well. Um, so the Jewish community were very afraid. And so, of course, they warned their children, ensure that you do not bring any form of noisemakers into the synagogue, into the shul, when the Megillah is read. There shall be no talking at all. We do not want to disturb the king, we do not want to disturb the crown prince. But of course, since when did Jewish children listen to their elders? And one young boy, we'll call him Moshe, that's a popular name today. Moshe secretly brought in a poppy seeded coated cracker. And when the first Haman was read, Moshe took out that braga and he started swinging it as hard as he could. And the Jewish community, all who were gathered, were horrified. Our downfall has just begun. And they all waited there in the shore with great trepidation, waiting for the king's guards 